pleased and I must say honored that you've taken a time out of your very busy schedule oh, to great. come up here and, and, and chat with us. It's, it's just a, a delight to have you with us. My honor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you have had such a, a career full of innovation since you graduated from MIT. Um, but perhaps you're best known, at least in our circles, as the creator of the Internet Archive. I was wondering, what gave you the inspiration to create the Internet Archive? What, what did you see that a lot of other folks just didn't? Oh, it was, it was actually, this is 1980, and I'm a geek at MIT. And it's one of those promises that's always been made, that we're going to have the Library of Congress on our desk. Any moment now. Or the Library of Alexandria, version 2. And it actually seemed like, you know, not that hard uh, to do. And this is at a time when AI was coming along. Mm -hmm. And so I worked at the AI lab, an artificial intelligence lab at MIT. And I thought that we were, we were data starved. The, the, the basically, if we're going to have these machines learn, they're going to have to learn from something. They might as well read all the books in the library. Um, and, okay, those are sort of heady days back, back in those days. But that's when I got on this kick, and I've never gotten off. So I'm, I'm just a one-trick pony. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting way, way to think of it, because you've done so many things. But it's all been in pursuit of trying to build the library. First we needed computers, then we needed to have the publishing system work, uh, which turned out to be the web. I did a system called Waze that came before it, but it sort of morphed into, into uh, the, the web. I didn't you know, invent the web, um, but pushed it and tried to get the publishers on board. Once the publishers were on board in the early 90s, then we could build the library. And um, so that's what we're off, off trying to do. And, and the idea that it's going to be a library, I think, is was the wrong idea. It really has to be libraries. We have to bring all the libraries because they're all quirky. I've learned a lot along the way. Um, and you just need the different points of view, um, the different funding streams, uh, the quirkiness, the, 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 the diversity that it is. So you need a decentralized system. Mm -hmm. Now you refer you to yourself as the digital librarian of the yes. Internet Archive. Um, what's, what's in your job description? I run it. I, so I, I, run, I run the Internet Archive. I'm the, li I'm the librarian. Um, and at that, um, to do the normal uh, personnel-ish type things, but just try to keep the focus on universal access to all knowledge. Mm -hmm. Can we make it? Uh, we have universal access, bits out, all knowledge, bits in. So we try to basically do those two functions. We measure ourselves based on are the collections growing and are they used more? And that's been a very helpful sort of guiding principle to sort of say, okay, how can we do whole media types? Can we do all of television? Can we do all books? Can we do um, all the journal literature, movies? Um, um, right now we're doing 78 RPM records, which I are actually are completely fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it's it really, really fun. Um, so we've got funding to do 400,000 sides. And trying to get all the metadata right and trying to link it in with all the other structures so that basically a generation that wasn't around. I mean, 78's really, even before my time. And so it's how do you go and bring these materials to new audiences um, by giving a rich resource? And that's, that's just been the fun of it. In your plenary, you were talking about digitizing library collections. Yes. Um, and saying that that can be, there can be a budget for that and it can be done um, Protecting the rights. Yes. So, how do you? How does the Bristol Public Library in, Bur in, in Bristol, Vermont, do that? So, the, as an example. Yeah. So we've basically got that before 1923 stuff done, more or less. There's always more to do, but it, it's sort of the, out of copyright. Now it's the question: How do we go and do with the missing century? Most of the really modern. Current books, people are buying in ebook form in some form or another, or they're leasing it in some weird way, which we have to sort of get back to buying. But, mm -hmm. but then there's this, there's all these books from the 20th century, say 23 to, I don't know, the end of the century, um, and we've got to get those online and get them circulated. So the idea of the Open Libraries program mm -hmm. is to make it so we, we wave a wand over the Bristol Library or, 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 or library. any other library or a university libraries and just go and think, boink, your library is now digital. So your patrons would then have a choice between going and finding the, the book on the shelf or checking out a digital version, a digitized version. And um, so that's the, the, the user proposition is they get 
a new way, a choice. Um, you know, the library's already paid for it. It's already been on the shelf. Um, so can we, can we do that? From the library's perspective, they can get to a new audience, um, to people at home, uh, people with disabilities, people that are far away, uh, people that want large print editions, uh, they want it read to them. Um, maybe even getting it so that AIs and um, robots can go and read some of these. And so the, from the library's proposition, uh, there's, there's that. From the publisher's um, uh, position, they get the digital files back if they want them. Um, and if there's popular and they're all these out of print ones, maybe they bring them back in print. Wouldn't that be great? Um, the authors, they get read. And we have examples of lots of, of books that are kind of obscure old books getting a lot of use. Um, so there's kind of maybe, you know, it's being used in a different way than it might have been intended, at least in its day. Um, but it, uh, and as, as readers, we get a much deeper view. I'm worried about what's on the internet isn't good enough. That we've basically come, it's not digital, as if it doesn't exist. And uh, so kids, say to us as well, we don't go to the libraries that much anymore. Um, if you can't find it on Google, or if it's not linked to in Wikipedia, we're in trouble. I think of Wikipedia as a great front door right. mm -hmm. to knowledge, but now we have to build the rest of the house. And I think the libraries and the in-copyright works in our libraries are the things that we need to get, get moving on. So you said, and I understand this, the one book, and you, you have a choice. You take the book out, you take yep. the digital out. Um, if your community is, let's just start small, the United States, and there's a book that someone takes out in Peoria, and it becomes popular, how do I get to it? I go on the wait list. Could that wait list not be months and months and months? It certainly can be for, for popular things. So the, oh, if you go to openlibrary.org, mm -hmm. And I recommend it. It's it's really it's pretty easy. O open library and yeah. you can see all these books. You can click on one and borrow it. And um, you have to get a free library card. Um, but the popular books have got a waiting list, mm -hmm. and that waiting list can be long because yes. we only have one copy. Because these are books that have been donated to the Internet Archive, right. so we've we've we physically own them, or they've been in libraries. Maybe you're Bristol, uh, yeah. Bristol, Vermont, um, that they're library has digitized that and put the uh, uh, the book back away. Mm -hmm. So there's only one copy, either physically or digitally, mm -hmm. being loaned at any one time. Um, and that's worked out great for the last six years. That's been up and running for six mm -hmm. years. It's been working fine. Um, but there's only one copy. Mm -hmm. So how do we make it so that there may be copies in Bristol. There might be in Middlebury. There mm -hmm. might be yeah, in uh, Waitsfield. And um, we're staying in Vermont here. Anyway, you can think yeah. of anywhere. and. Um, uh, that those libraries could choose to lend the digital versions of their physical books as well um, or make them available to their blind and dyslexic users in their region, um, this would be a, a, a great step forward towards increasing the amount of digital inventory of digitized mm -hmm. books that are um, digitized in a coordinated fashion. Right? Let's just digitize once. Great. And then um, either use the Internet Archive's circulation system to help out the smaller libraries, or some others will want the actual digital books and they'll handle it. So if, if this hypothetical library, or not so, digitizes their collection, then they have multiple ways of loaning that digitized collection. Is that, that Yes, but also book? other people might have digitized it already. Right. So we did an overlap study with Delaware County, Ohio's library, and I don't know, there were 45,000 books that we'd already digitized out of their collection. Mm -hmm. So uh, instantly that was done. Now that wasn't their full collection. I think they had 300,000 ISBNs mm -hmm. so then in that era. So we have more work to do. But um, you can leverage the work that everybody else is doing. Yeah. So I think the smaller libraries will just leverage other people. Or they'll just go and find, what are the ones that we have that haven't been done yet? And maybe they either digitize those themselves or they send it to a regional scanning center of the Internet Archive. Mm -hmm. Those cost about 10 cents a page to turn mm -hmm. the pages mm -hmm. and, and digitize the book. Um, or if it's donated to the Internet Archive, we'll pay for it and put it up. Okay. Thank Lots you. of ways to get yeah. the books digitized. And then we need to use the libraries and the wonderful capacity that they have to touch 
huge populations mm -hmm. to go and get the right books to the right people. And, and that brings up a follow-up that I have to Albert's okay. question, and that's discovery, the discovery of all of this. Yes. As they, how do you see that evolving? We're trying a few different things. Um, and of, of course, it's go to the people, right? Go, go to where they are looking for books. So um, the online catalogs, the OPACs, um, we've done some experiments where you can put a little piece of JavaScript in the web page that finds the ISBN in this case, it can be OCLC number, and then ask us, is it, do we have it and is it checked out? And puts up different icons. If we don't have it, then it's blank. If it's checked out, it puts up one icon. If it's, hey, click here and you can get it right away, then that will just go out. So that's been just an experimental integration. You can imagine much closer integrations with the ILSs, but that takes some doing. So OPACs. Another is Google. Really, I think we want to make it so that if you're looking for a good fact on something, a World War II or um, some genealogy thing or whatever, um, that these books should pop up in Google. And maybe you'll be going to archive.org, but if the local libraries have said yes, um, then you'd be borrowing it from those libraries. So that's kind of like the Boston Public Library right. digitized a lot of genealogy and cookbooks. Uh, and it says right there on the book, this is digitized and loaned to you from the Boston Public Library. Another um, discovery of opportunity I think we've got is Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. I, Wikipedia has got all sorts of footnotes on the end. Let's turn all of those footnotes blue. Let's make all of those links. Let's make it so that everything might be a book reference with a page number and it's live now. You click, you go to the book and you see where the book right there. So you're encouraged to draw yourself in. What entity makes that within Wikipedia allows that to happen or makes, gives the rights for people to annotate those links yeah. to put make them into, into uh, hyperlinks? Um, that's the Wikipedia community. Um, mm -hmm. And we worked with the Wikipedia community on the Wayback Machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Wayback Machine is an archive of the World Wide Web. So we crawl the web and make it available uh, for on archive.org. You can type in a URL and see the old pages. Mm -hmm. um, well, it turns out that a lot of links in Wikipedia's references had gone dead. Right. And uh, somebody in Pennsylvania, volunteer, made a robot to go through and test, is it dead? And what's the newest one that the Internet Archive has of it? Oh. And we then worked on getting that to be sort of production ready. Mm -hmm. And the community... Um, on Wiki, English Wikipedia about a year ago said, yes, go for it. And we've now fixed over one million broken links on Wikipedia. And now it's going through all the other languages and the different communities are saying yes, 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 or no, no, yes. And so it's now, I think Germany does, uh, Japan, Indonesia, all these different uh, Wikipedias have let the robot go and fix their links. So it's it's a community thing. It's well, not a... As is Wikipedia. It as is, is anyway. Wikipedia. Yeah. But the idea is let's get our books wherever people are. And let's go and get them out there um, and easy to read. Let's get them on, um, on mobile platforms. Let's get them so that they're uh, integrated. So it's not yet another discovery system. Mm -hmm. Boy, we have discovery system fatigue. It's like, do I have to look in yet a different catalog for something? It's like, no, no, no. Let's get it surfaced the way people are looking for information now. And right. just get it to be better information. That'd be great if we could have just one-stop shopping and just find it all in one spot. That would be the I don't know that it'll be one. I think it'll be many shops, but let's put it in every shop. Right. Yeah. I guess would be the, let's go and get these things out there. This is an open system. Let's get it out there. Uh, you've also mentioned, at least I've read that you've mentioned, uh, that publishers are digitizing their catalogs uh -huh. and their back... Back, back, uh, back catalog, but they're also creating services around these digital offerings. And I was wondering what services are you referring to and which ones do you find to be the most effective or the most interesting? Well, I'm not a real user of a lot of these services, mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what, how to answer it from that perspective, but we work with MIT Press in an interesting way. MIT Press um, uh, was interested in doing their own digital offering. It was uh, of their catalog to license to universities. Awesome. Um, and they uh, called up and asked if I'd help advise. I said, well, I, I don't know about advice. How about help do it? 
<laughs> and so um, we have external funding um, from a uh, Arcadia fund. Mm -hmm. It's a philanthropic fund to digitize their books. And MIT Press gets them back to go and make their service. But also, the Internet Archive holds them so that all libraries that own a physical copy of any of those MIT Press books can lend um, based on their physical copy. So it's an explicit, not leveraging sort of fair use or, 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 or legal issues. It's, it's explicitly a, a, a publisher saying yes. Houghton Mifflin has also, um, uh, also um, said yes to their backlist being digitized and lent. So uh, we're, we're making progress. I think we've got a good balance here. This, this morning's presentation with uh, Ms. Brand from MIT, she was talking about choosing which of the back files. And I'm coming to the issue of, of copyright. And, and she was saying she was holding back the, the, the books with a lot of illustrations because of copyright issues. Can you talk a little bit about, I understand the one book, one person. But there is this changing format issue in copyright that is very much in flux. And could you talk a little bit about that? Well, she's going to do what she thinks she can do early on. And she's, she's taking her steps along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so she's actually gone. She said she's going and checking back with, with authors and seeing mm -hmm. if there's anybody unhappy with this. And she said vast majority no. But some people I think she called cranky. Um, mm -hmm. right. And... Uh, I think people are just getting used to what's going on. We've, I think we, we all want the Library of Alexandria. We want, as an author, we want to be read. Right. But we don't want to feel like we're being taken advantage of. Right. That, we're, uh, that somebody else is making money off of us, I think, is, mm -hmm. is, is one of the things that... Uh, and as long as we can go and show that we're doing a good job, quality job, that maybe there's no market for it, or if there is a market, then, then you'll get paid. Um, but people have already bought these books. Um, and as Amy pointed out, um, the MIT Press books, thousands of different titles are already on some of these underground networks. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the book publishing industry's already had their Napster moment. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's time to, to not think that no, that they are in complete control. Let, let, if, if the libraries can be made part of the equation, um, then they can be a very useful part of the plot of the evolution. Mm -hmm. But if publishers really make it hard on libraries, um, the users will just ditch the libraries, and I think that will be worse for the whole ecosystem. Speaking of, of publishers and libraries, I was, and this might be a little off topic, but I was wondering, what do you make of the library publishing movement, the library publishing coalition? It's it's called, in the in, in which. Libraries uh, are, in at least in academic presses, are in many cases responsible for the press in places like Michigan University Press, Purdue University Press. Um, it strikes me they would be natural allies for someone like you to, to expand book collections. MIT Press is, is um, a part of the MIT libraries. So there's, um, and not, that's not the case for, for everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, th I think we'll find I, find, I think we'll find this format shifting idea um, palatable in the long term. I, I, I think it may take a little fits and starts, but you know, we, we've been doing it for six years now. It, it's, it's working. Um, it, and this lending thing is kind of lame, I have to say. It, open access is so much better. Um, because all sorts of robots can go with no permissions, just come through and, and try out things, and it can be integrated in new ways, atomized. They, all sorts of reasons to do open access. This this um, lending thing is kind of a middle path. Yeah. It's kind of what it is we can do. I sure hope it's not the last step in this. Um, we want people to have access to the 20th century materials because they're learning from whatever it is they can get a hold of. And what they're getting a hold of isn't the best we have to offer. And therefore, we're going to get the generation we deserve. And I think we're seeing some of that play out now, where people are, um, well, trying to understand issues and politics right. based on things that are the currently paid for points of view that are being pushed out there, as opposed to some of the wealth of information that we have in our libraries. 
um, that is not uh, very accessible. And that can take a real toll. Yeah. Um, you've also mentioned that the obvious big winners are um, just pe patrons, just people. And how do you see that evolving? And, 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 and how do you see this all happening where patrons are such, are, are the big winners and the general public is the big winner in all of this? The, what the patrons, I think, are paying for through their taxes um, and through their time is trying to get through to the best information, contextualized as best they can, and help get directions on what it is they might want to read. And if we can revolutionize the library system to not only um, be community focused with community centers, which they're doing a great job on, they're busier than ever, but can we also enable and empower our library system, our librarians, to affect people's online lives in a much bigger way. Uh, people are looking for good information. That can require some curatorial help, um, some preservation help, so it's not available from a publisher anymore. So where is it? It's in our libraries. Uh, that the amount of money that's spent on libraries in the United States is about $12 billion a year. Um, I think a third or a quarter of that goes to publishers' products. And that's not jump change. That's actually serious money. Um, I don't suggest we spend less. I just suggest we spend it better. Um, if we continue to do this interlibrary loan, where we're just sending these books around through the mail all the time. It, it, um, one study uh, said that there's about $300 million a year spent on interlibrary loan. And most of that goes to UPS. Yeah. This is dumb. This is just not smart stuff. I mean, some of it you actually have to move around. Fine, I love my books too, and I actually, I, don't, I mostly read physical books um, if I'm gonna read something from start to finish. But if I just want a little piece, I wanna understand it, an instantaneous uh, ILL, I'm the same way. why not? Why not? And then you find out whether you really want it. Because I bet a lot of these books are shipped and somebody looks at it and says, nope. Um, and that $300 million, that could be doing a lot better than spending fossil fuels trucking them around. So earlier you had said, and maybe in your presentation, that you were data hungry. So now you're building the data. But really, in order to spread the benefit, we're talking discovery. Yes. And discovery seems to be a hard nut. Yes. Um, with multiple discovery and save us from federated searches, search engines and ILSs. How, how do we as a community you know, I don't want to get to Google. I want, I want something better than Google, but I want something as easy as Google. What direction should we be taking now that the data is starting to be built? And yes, we need better metadata. We'll always need better descriptors. And that, that will happen whether by robot or by, by human. But how do we get to where we really benefit? Who are the, who are the winners? The winners will, the people, will be people who can find it. Mm. Good point. Um, I'm encouraged by Google. I mean, I, I, I kicked them in the shins because I thought the Google Books cert, uh, project, some of it was done incorrectly, and they got back on course. Mm -hmm. um, but this Google search engine is, is magic. <laughs> you, you can just type in a couple words, and you find something relevant to your subject. I don't know how they do it. It's magic. Going and saying we want to do uh, Google again is going to be a little hard. Let's go and leverage Google for doing what they're doing, but then let's let a hundred flowers bloom. Let's make it so that this, this stuff, um, okay, as an example, um, so uh, 78 RPM records. Right. We're digitizing lots of them. It turns out they didn't write the dates on the labels. And so that's one of the things you want to know. So how do we find this? And there are databases, and so we go in, and we can only get about a half of the 78s to have dates by using the databases. And so um, we just came out with a search engine API to the Internet Archive, mm -hmm. and I've been using it to search Cashbox Magazine, which was something like a Billboard magazine, mm -hmm. but it had been digitized by, I think it was Middlebury College. Mm -hmm. And Middlebury College digitized this, and it's on the Internet Archive. And you can now search across all of those issues for the catalog uh, number and the publisher and the, and the artist. Do. 
and it's coming up with dates up a storm. So it's a different kind of use to search engines. So I think, I'm hoping there are lots of different kinds of search engines. So we have social sciences and uh, mm -hmm. economics, engineering, already the, uh, the legal guys. Let's go and have a Google a month come out but are specialized in different ways that are using the same information that are allowed to go and do data mining on the whole corpus. Um, and then when end users want it, they get a snippet for free uh, without, without uh, waiting. And then if, if they want the whole thing, they, they click to borrow. That would be a win. Yeah. 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 Do you see a time when all library collections are just totally digital and we no longer collect books, print books? Um, Oh, will all library collections be digital? No, I think some of the value of them is the, the physicality. Um, but I don't, I don't hear people mourning the loss of the telephone book. Right there. More and more things are just going digital. And yes, there might be a physical form, but it's starting to not be the point. The major, the major one is the digital. So for new works going forward, yeah, there'll be physical things. My work, my works in book arts, right? All, all sorts of, you know, I love books. Sure. Um, but the, the industry, of the information communication, the in, uh, education community, all of that's going digital. There's the 20th century and, and before that's going to stay in some sort of mixed both forms. There's a role for both um, right now. Um, buying books and digitizing them is not a bad idea um, because we have for sale and we have right to hold it forever, where a lot of these licensing deals with ebooks are really peculiar. I mean, um, when the music guys, Steve Jobs went and faced down the music industry and said, we can't make the DRM systems work. And we're going to have to um, send these out without DRM and it's gonna be 99 cents, God bless. And, mm -hmm. and he made it so that now you can go to Amazon and you can buy an MP3. But right now, you can't go to an Amazon and buy a non-rights encumbered um, EPUB. So the, the book publishing industry is behind the music industry, which isn't a good place to be, <laughs> right? You don't know, think of the music industry as, as been, having been very... Um... So I think that we have to move the book publishing industry along um, so that we're buying eBooks, and we buy what we can, scan what we have to. And, and, and helping the, the publishing industry move in that direction. What do you, how do you think libraries can, can help with that? Or are with we their pocketbooks. I think of that three or four billion dollars. Let's have libraries buy ebooks in the same sense that they bought physical books. And librarians are trustworthy. Um, and, and maybe even so conservative that they opt so much that they actually trade off conservativeness against their patrons' interests. But um, Let's trust people with information. Um, the, the music industry finally started coming around um, after this. And every industry is different. Um, but I think we've got to move that forward. But the missing century, mm -hmm. those things will never be published in EPUB form. Um, it's just, there's not enough of a market. They just and have to be digitized. They just have to be digitized and made available under some controlled circulation system such that people don't freak out. And if there's something that really becomes popular, it gets put back in, in print, and then people can buy lots of copies. But until then, we have a few copies at least circulating. Maybe, maybe what will happen with the book industry is what happened with the uh, sound industry. People just did it. And then the industry came around when it was, it was a fait accompli. People just copied stuff. And finally, the book industry, I mean, the, the audio industry said, okay, 99 yeah, Nap cents. Napster was it. sort of a turning point for them. Right. That's happened in the book industry. It's called library genesis. And mm -hmm. at least for the college um, uh, uh, kids, mm -hmm. there is a real alternative mm -hmm. out there. Sci-Hub, I understand, right. is also majorly used. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's, no, just what the, it's just what's happened. And I'd say that's... It's an indication that there's been some market failure, that there's a, a unsatisfied need. And it's not just for free books. Um, people seem to be perfectly happy to watch things on Netflix if they right. are beamed into your home right. um, and pay for it. So I think there's lots of money 
to be made. People understand the value. Mm -hmm. We just need to do some things a little bit differently. That's on a mostly on a going forward basis. And I'm on a nonprofit, so I'm mostly working on the kind of the public interest on, on And this. you're also working on a set, uh, your focus right now is on the set period of time that is that is is a hole in our collection, in our digital collection. Yes. Yes. How do we go and and uh, and bring this these these things up 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 and out? I my grandfather was uh, was was a writer mm -hmm. and he he wrote these wonderful self-help books back uh -huh. in the 30s and 40s. And they're way out of print. Mm -hmm. Way out of print. Um, I have one copy. I have two sons. Mm -hmm. Am I really going to only have one copy? Uh, go mm -hmm. to one son. Sorry, I, this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So going and digitizing these things and making them as available as we can. I, when there's a when there's a commercial interest, that's when we should start to, to gripe. Um, but it's we've. I think we've gotten ourselves into a knot in such a way that the libraries are not playing the role they could in this digital transition. Did you have a question about no. library vendors? Or are you? No, well? that's fine. That's good. Yeah. Um, I do have one final question. It's, uh, it's not exactly a trick question, but it's a, a question where if you were sitting in Albert in my chair, what question would you ask yourself? Um, how can libraries take the first step? Where, where, how do you take the, how do you put your toe in the water? Where, where, where's, where's the role? And um, I've seen a lot of people try to come get through this. There's a, usually nervousness. There's usually sort of, well, am I allowed to or what? And people just don't know quite what their role and responsibility is. And that's. Um, so I would have, I have some suggestions that try things. Try things. Try things from within your world that makes sense to do the first thing. Like take something that is your own community's interest, their websites, or something that's been published locally, and try going and digitizing and making it available. So try to take um, somebody with, uh, with, with sight impairment, maybe a dyslexia, and just digitize it and hand it to them. And you say, well, is that all the rights encumbering stuff that we're supposed to do? I, why don't you just get going? Um, send some books to the Internet Archive's regional scanning centers. We'll do 10 books, 100 books um, for free. Just do it. Um, just to get sort of an idea of how does that process work. Kick some tires. Um, I think get off the beach and into the water. Um, and that's on the digitizing front. Uh, go and use the Open Libraries website. Um, if if you if your library has either uh, a list of ISBNs that we can go and match, we can make a collection of what do we already have that overlaps with yours. So you get a little branded thing. We did this with Delaware County Library uh, in Ohio, and they were thrilled. It's like, wow, there's our books on your site that we can have our patrons borrow right away, and it's easy. Just Get going. And I'm Brewster at archive.org. <laughs> Openlibraries.online is the library's website. Archive.org or openlibrary.org. All of these things sort Just of come back to us. Google. Search on Google. Dive in. So we should send you or communicate with you about the holdings of our libraries and a way to send you that so you can do the overlap study and see what's interesting. That's, that's a way to start. Mm -hmm. um, digitize some things, make them available. Mm -hmm. um, go borrow a book or go to archive.org and hit the upload button. Mm -hmm. Just take something that, you know, take menus from your local or in, in the public library sense. In the academic libraries, mm -hmm. it'll be something uh, different. Um, and academic libraries are mostly interested in the journal literature, and we're not really working on that as part of this program. So this program is really focused on monographs. Mm -hmm. But why don't we just get through with the monographs? and? Um, it could be done very quickly as we could work together on this. We've digitized 3 million books already. We're looking to do, we've done 500,000 modern books, mm -hmm. sort of post-1923. We're looking to do another 4 million. At that point, we have a Boston Public Library, a Yale, a Princeton, all online. Then matching it up with library catalogs through OCLC record number matches or with library link, Zephyria, then that's great. We also are interested in 
um, deaccessioned books. Mm -hmm. So people are, are weeding, uh, we'll pay to box them and, and ship them. And uh, we're interested in one copy of everything we don't have. And we'll digitize those and make those back available. But not just the books, music, video, 78 RPM records, um, CDs, LPs. We want all media. So we have the funding to digitize everything we own. I think there are going to be a couple other big libraries that go and say, you know, we're going to be a big boy too. And we're going to digitize everything we own that somebody else hasn't digitized. So I think there are going to be a bunch of us that have major holdings that come from our collections. Almost all the rest are going to be used based on other people's digitization work. As you were talking, one final question came up in my mind. And it's, have you, do you have any partnerships with institutional repositories from university libraries that are digitizing all manner of, of, of uh, online, things? Yeah, their off-site repositories are, are, are collecting sort of these shared print things to try to winnow down to make sure things. Um, we have conversations with them. So, well, there's uh, one uh, big university in, in, uh, in Canada mm -hmm. that's looking as they move their materials to an off-site repository to actually scan them as they go through. So it's a way of, of thinking about how do you go and give some access to those materials to everybody in the world, but also to their faculty and students, um, to go and make it so it's not just a deep, deep dark pit. They're not just rat-holing their books. They're actually offering new digital access and physical preservation. And uh, we would love to do this with all of them. <laughs> Brewster, thank you so much to, for taking, like I said, taking time out of your schedule and, and sharing your thoughts and ideas with us. We've, we've learned a tremendous amount. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. the opportunity. Mm -hmm.